All right, hi everyone. Um, it's really nerve wracking to be the first person up here, but I'm excited to be here. Um, if you don't know me, my name's Lourdes Genart. I go by Lou. I use both names to not, uh, interchangeably. Um, and today I'll be talking to you about terrain cartography for non-terrainers, or as I like to call it, shaded relief for beginners, small map mappers, and chronically impatient designers. Um, I've said it here many times before, but my path to cartography has not been a traditional one. I've done most of my cartographic training outside of school, either on my own or on the job, um, since much of my formal education focused on critical human geography. So when I started to lean more into cartography, I found that shaded relief was a giant obstacle, and I often felt like this. It didn't matter how many times I'd turn to my friends, my fellow cartos, or shadedrelief.com, I couldn't get over this hurdle for a few years. Um, and the hurdle for me wasn't that I didn't know what buttons to press to get the thing that I wanted. It was that I didn't know why I was pressing these buttons or what good relief looked like. So it wasn't until I got to the job that I have now um, where I truly learned um, how to do terrain cartography thanks to my coworker, Gene Thorpe. Um, and after Gene showed me his meso metho methodology, I felt like I had a good grasp on terrain and shaded relief. And I then started to reflect on a few things and try to develop my own method. Part of this reflection was considering the types of shaded relief out there. And to me, it's sort of a spectrum. At that start of the spectrum, you have pre-made stuff. Maybe it's natural earth. Maybe it's the Esri Hillshade layer. Then you have the things that take one program to make, two programs to make, three programs to make. I've put Blender at the other end of the spectrum and other programs because to me, they now feel like what terrain cartography used to feel like. Um, so it may not be a fair position for Blender, but in my spectrum, that's where it is. So as a first time user, I found myself here, but I didn't like it here. I wanted to add my own flair to shaded relief and I didn't want to rely on what was already available. I also sort of wanted to unpack the black box that I'd felt terrain cartography was for me. So when my coworker Gene showed me his method, I felt like I got the understanding I was chasing but then I found myself here, and let me tell you, I hate it here. <laughs> I hate the idea of having to open three programs, not because there was something wrong with his method, his method is my gold standard, but because I'm chronically impatient, and because the majority of the maps I produce at work are small, so why do I wanna open three programs for a map that's like half a page? And so this prompted me to start developing my, work, my own workflow, because this is a sweet spot that I wanted to occupy. Um, and it's important for me to note that I wanted to occupy this spot because I'm not making maps where the relief is the primary component of the map. Um, it just adds some background information, but the map could typically stand on its own without shaded relief. So for example, these are some products we've made at work. Various cartographers have worked on them um, using various techniques, all to say that the shaded relief adds nuance to the map, but these maps can stand on their own without the shaded relief. On rare occasions, we do make maps where the relief is the primary component, but these are a bit rare and take you know a lot of time. Um, all right, so that's it for background. Now starts the journey to explain to you how I got here, if you've ever felt like I do about shaded relief. So I wanna start with an explainer. These are the programs that I use because these are the programs I have available to me at work. Um, and when I say map publisher, it technically also means illustrator because map publisher is an extension of illustrator. If you wanna be technical about it, I use three programs, but I think I use two. <laughs> I know, the irony is rich. But, but if there's anything that you walk away with, it's that this method can be done on any program and what doesn't matter aren't the steps, it's the approach. So I can't even begin to cover how many other, other programs exist out there, but this works for all of these. All right. So this is the real meat of my presentation. This is the explainer, because following steps is easy, but like I've mentioned, I wanna know why I'm doing things. So my method draws on the value enhanced model, which was developed by Tom, pa Tom Patterson and Mike Herman and is a tutorial on shadedrelief.com. The, the value enhanced model utilizes multiple shaded relief renderings to strike a balance between contrast and detail and prevent the loss of data at either the lightest or darkest areas in any given relief. In the shadedrelief.com tutorial, they use two layers to do this, and it's done in Photoshop. Um, my take on this will be three layers, and it's essentially just done in Map Publisher, and we never open Photoshop. 
Um, because I'm also deeply convinced that you can do a lot of things in Illustrator without ever having to open Photoshop. I will die on that hill. Um, so yes, it's shady up in that hill. Um, so we're going to create, so for this presentation, we're going to create a shadow layer to really draw out the contrast and get those like what I call shadowy shadows. Then we're going to make a highlight layer to tame some of the crazy shadows and reveal subtle details and important slopes. And then we're going to create what I call a hypsometric highlight layer which is gonna be less of a hypsometric like tint as we know it, but more a manipulation of the DEM itself to make the peaks in my shaded relief shine. So the first steps are gonna be pretty quick. You know, you establish your, your workspace, you set up your extent, you do what you gotta do, and then you make sure that you project your data. And after this point, you do not change it, you do not reproject. Um, and so you're going to take note of the exact parameters of your projection because now you're going to then open your DEM in ArcGIS Pro or whatever program you're using, um, and you're gonna project it to those exact coordinate, to those exact parameters that you had. I'm not gonna get into what finding an, like, and opening a DEM is, because that's its own rabbit hole. I'm gonna assume people know that, but I know that it's also like a challenge sometimes. So if you have multiple DEMs, you mosaic them. If you have one, you just project it. Um, but essentially, you set up your DEM to match the parameters of your workspace. So now we're gonna start creating our first layer, the shadow relief layer. Um, huge shout out to Eileen Buckley for writing this 2018 gem for Esri, and then Stephanie Saifan for taking that one and writing a tutorial for QGIS on how to do multi-directional hillshade relief. Another hill I will die on, I will always use that tool. Um, so essentially, you start by setting up your multi-directional hillshade. This is for your shadow layer. You do this under the raster functions. And this is really where it starts. You're gonna establish your Z factor for your multi-directional hillshade. Because I have a large area, I want a high Z factor to exaggerate the height variation in my terrain. So for this presentation, I chose seven for my shadow layer. Um, if I were to have chosen one, it would have been a very flat image like you see on the left, but if you had a better DEM, like a one meter, and you had a smaller area, as I do on the right, which is shown where it is on the map on the left, like one would have been a great Z factor, but for this case, I needed a seven so that I could get the result that I wanted. And once I chose uh, a Z factor of seven and I got my multi-directional hillshade, I then applied a linear stretch under the symbology tab. Um, the linear stretch type was a standard deviation with a number of four standard deviations. And this was done um, to utilize the full range of tones available or what we like to call tonal variability. And then you export it. There you go, you have your first layer. Um, and you're gonna export it as a map export and not as a raster because the raster won't maintain the symbology components. Um, you wanna sort of export it as an image which has its pros and cons, we'll get into that, but that's what we do. I also wanna note that I always double the image size on ArcGIS Pro um, because that's how it's gonna work best with my workspace in Map Publisher. All right, so now we're gonna create the highlight uh, relief layer. It's, you're essentially gonna repeat steps, steps six through nine, but now your Z factor is gonna go down so that you can bring out some of the more subtle details, and your standard deviation is gonna go up for the same reason. So here I chose a, stand, um, a Z factor of four and a standard deviation uh, of 15. And then you export this the same way you just exported the previous one. Um, this is the third step. I will call it optional because you could really just do the first two and you have a great product. But I like this one to sort of bring some details to the peaks. Um, you're going to get your DEM. You're then gonna convert it from black to white to 40% gray to white. You're gonna apply a 2% um, clip so that it reduces outlier areas where the highlights might be the most distracting. And then you're gonna export again. So now we have all three layers exported. We're back in our workspace. At this point, you are done with ArcGIS Pro. You can close it, one program down, one, go, one to go. So you wanna make sure that your layers are in a specific order with the hypsometric highlight at the top, the regular highlight in the middle, shadow at the bottom, and then we're gonna apply some opacity to these layers. Um, 
your shadow is going to stay at 100%. Your highlights are going to be between 50 to 90. This is to taste, you know, like a recipe, salt to taste, opacity to taste. And then your hypsometric highlight is going to be between 5 and 50. Um, and the blending mode is normal. We're just playing with transparency, really. A lot of you could just stop here. Uh, if you want a gray, like, shaded relief background, this is great. Uh, like, end, right? But it, I have an additional step where I change the foreground color just because I sort of like working with a very dusty brown on most of my maps to start with. Um, but that's just a very simple trick and is also very optional. All right, so like step 14, you're done. You marvel at the fruits of your labor and then you go on to finish your actual design. You add water, you add labels, you add the things you want to do. Um, but I wanted to show you the difference between what it would mean to have the hypsometric highlight layer on and off. So on the left, you can see that the cascades shine out a bit more. Um, and on the right, you can see that it's a bit flatter. And I think the one on the right would be great, again, if you're making a background map, if you're making a small map where the shaded relief isn't the primary component of the map. This is a review of the steps. I'm going to post this presentation to Slack, so do not worry. But I just wanted to summarize that this was just 14 steps. All right, so I talked about genes methodology, and so I made my map in comparison to Gene's method. Um, and I, the entire time I was like trying to just gun with his method and make sure that it stood up to it. Um, and so on the left is his method, on the right is mine. I think they're pretty similar. He wants me to let you know that he hates that I left the coastline on there. I do not care. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I'm pretty proud of this. Like the whole time, like Gene's method is three programs. It's really iterative and it's a bit time consuming. And so I was just happy that I got to develop a methodology that was just a bit quicker. I'll, I will say a caveat is that his method does work better for like much larger maps or a lot of detail. Um, but also if you thought to yourself, wow, Lou, you could have just done this in ArcGIS Pro. That is true. I just did it in one program. Um, John Nelson has a bunch of, uh, well, has some tutorials on blending modes and that was a new feature. And so that allowed me to sort of stay in one program and recreate this. Um, but if some of you are curious about like, can this scale up? The answer is yes. Um, these were the maps that were the catalyst for this presentation. Um, they're maps of a mountain I either want to climb or have climbed. Um, they are my pride and joy, and like, I, you can't convince me that my method doesn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> the last thing, the last thing I want to say is that if you're a beginner and you feel overwhelmed, I just want to remind you that most of us are also learning and messing up and playing around and making mistakes. So I want to offer to you my design philosophy. And what this really is getting at is that creative play matters. Sometimes design choices don't have to be strategic or planned out. Sometimes you can just get here, decide you like it, reverse engineer it, and then present it at a cartog cartography conference. All right, so thank you. I, uh, PDF will be on Slack. Major shout out to Jean and Lawrence who helped me with some of the more statistical stuff of this presentation. But thank you guys.